Hey guys, now we're gonna start the really interesting stuff. We're gonna start doing some problems and you, so you guys can actually do it, okay? Now this is the part where you get involved into this process. So if you were passively learning up until now, stop now and start actively being part of this, okay? Because that's how you will truly learn. So let's start off by, I'm gonna give you guys problems to do, but first I wanna show you how it's structured. So then when you read those problems, you're not just sitting there like, what is going on? I want you to start understanding how to problem solve, and then I'll give you guys exercises that you can solve on your own, and then I'll provide you with solutions. So let's get started. Let's say I give you a function called uh, sum to, okay? And it returns the sum of two numbers, okay? So let's just make it a little bit more clear. A function called sum two that takes in two inputs and it returns a sum of uh, those two numbers, okay? That's the thing, that's what it's saying. Now your job would be to break this down. So how I would break this down and I would say, here's what the input does. It takes two things, let's call it num1, num2, or let's not be lazy and say number one and number two. And then output is just number one plus number two, okay? So it takes those two numbers and it returns them. So it helps me uh, break this whole sentence into something that I can code much easier, okay? And then uh, name of the function, function name is called sum two. Okay, so now I know what the output of it is, like or kind of how it's done, what the input is, it expects. Now I'm gonna try to see if I can create some examples of what it should look like. So I wanna be able to say sum two, give it some number like one and two. So this is how I'll actually use it, okay? And then my expected output should be three, right? If I take one and two, if I give it one and two, it should add it and it should return three, all right? That's my expected output. Okay, so now let's get to coding this kind of function. If you give it something like 100 and then you give it 200 here, it should return 300. So here's our work. Define sum two. I wanna give it one and two, or sorry, I wanna give it number one. I wanna give it some number, uh, some another variable called number two. And I wanna say return number one plus number two. All right, and now let's test it out. I'm gonna give it, if you just define a function and don't do anything else, notice what happens when I run it. I get none, nothing happened. It's like defining a variable. If I say x is equal to five, it doesn't actually run and give you something. It just makes x five. So function gives names to like blocks of code, all right? Now let's print it out. Let's call the function sum two on a number one and two, and let's see if it matches our expectations and it gives us back three, okay? Now, let's do it on another one, 100 and 200, right? It gave us back 300, that's good. It's taking those two numbers and returns them. Well, how does it work? When we call the function with 100 and 200 as inputs, it goes back to the definition of the function, puts in 100 for number one, right? It puts in this 100 for number one and puts in this 200 for the second second number. So everywhere it sees number one, it just replaces it with 100. Everywhere it sees number two, it replaces with 200, okay? So this happens and then this happens, okay? It does 300, all right? That's the result of calling the sum to function. So this part evaluates to 300, and then it puts that part out to the screen, okay? And that's the same logic that gets applied for one comma two. Okay, so this was the example. In the next video, I wanna give you your very first problem, okay? So I hope you're excited. 
and let's go from there.